Hello buddy, Sanier, engineer, MBA, and investor. And in today's beautiful day, one day before New Year's Eve, I wanna talk about this article, again on wired.co.uk, and the title goes, CRISPR's quest to slay the Donegal arm, Amy. I, I don't know how to pronounce Donegal here, but let's just pronounce, let's just assume it's that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Please don't be mean if I mispronounce Doningo. Uh, so a trial used genome editing tool inside the body hints at treating or even curing a rare fatal disease and is changing the community in the process. So this article is actually pretty cool because it talks a little bit about history and these are, you know, topics of history plus science, CRISPR merging in one article. I find that really fascinating and I'm like, you know what, let's make a video on this. And our couple of last videos have gotten lots of views. I want to give a shout out to all our viewers. Thank you so much, guys, especially those who are liking, subscribing, and of course, sharing. A lot of people share our videos. Thank you so much, guys, for the support. Even if you want to share this video to like a significant other or to your cousins, brothers, siblings, family, friends, uh, you know, one view makes a whole difference and one subscriber definitely changes the path of this channel. So thank you so much, guys. So let's go in, in this article. Let's see what we can get from it. And I think it translates really well with the current status of a program from Intilia. So let's take a look at it here. In the fifth century, in the early medieval Ireland, an Irish king gave a name in an area land of the north tip of the Irish coast. His kingdom was called Tir Chonal, land of Conal, or today Doningo. So that's where they got the name from. Somewhere along the king's descendant line, uh, it's thought to be a mistake in a scion genome, specifically a mutation in the genome responsible for a pure protein called TTR, which actually is from NTLA. We know they've uh, addressed that with NTLA 2001. The genetic error, uh, sorry, the genetic error resulted in the birth of a rare condition known as hereditary, uh, well, ATTR, amyloidosis. The TTR protein is pre predominantly uh, in the liver and responsible for sh shuttling vitamin A and a hormone called thyroxine around the body. Okay, so genetic mutation produces a botch version of it and a misshape of TTR aggravates it and leaves clumps of amyloid, another protein issues around the body, around the muscles, nerves, and of course this is obviously a wrecking havoc. Today along a 50 miles coast, Doningal, where Irish language still predominantly spoken in many areas. The mutation is found about 1% of the population. That's pretty big. 1% of the population, um, that's pretty big. It's estimated that there are about 50,000 people across the world. Doningal Amy is just one type. So it's, it's interesting. So eritery amyloidosis, Doningal Amy is just one type. So there are other types, right, out of those 50,000 people. There are more than 130 mutations of that gene, so that's probably why you have many types. Carriers of these mutations tend to crop up, okay? Uh, they, they can be found in northern Portugal, around the city of Porto. I've been to Porto. It's a beautiful city, beautiful country, Portugal, beautiful city. I highly recommend you guys to go visit if you can, if you can afford it. Uh, it's not that expensive, actually, and uh, if you can spend like a week minimum, I think that's amazing, in Porto, Lisbon, and other areas of Portugal, uh, has also been found in northern Sweden, Japan. So clearly this is international here in different regions around the world. West African here with another type here, uh, another mutation rather. Uh, while each mutation produces a slightly different version of the disease, in that case, Doningo Amy condition typically makes itself known about the age of 60. And that's pretty bad because that means you live your first 60 years without knowing you have this mutation. Right? And there are reasons why patients die between 3 and 15 years after diagnosis, usually due to chronic heart failure. So obviously this is lethal. Obviously this is killing people. This is not just something you can live with for the rest of your 80, 90 years old. A patient wouldn't usually tell their health doctor, but they, okay, so they're basically saying why this is not really known um, across the industry here. So let's take a look at... Oh, okay, so the same year, a similar condition in the Appalach Appalach Appalachian region, which is a region of the United States here. Okay, it was caused by a gene. And then as the answers of Appalachian 
family had immigrated to the West Virginia in the early 180s, uh, 1080s, um, 1800s from Derry from Northern Ireland, which borders Don Ingle to the east. So obviously, immigration and so on. Uh, Crarries traits around the world. That's probably why a lot of these diseases are spread out around the world. Actually, is a reason why it is spread out, including traveling and so on. Right? So, you can see here, they're going to Doningal cases, 16th century by Portugal sailors, Portuguese sailors with the Spanish Armada. Okay, so they're going with history here, a little bit, a little bit of history here uh, in his methods. Okay, and in looking at that, they're going to current test status now. They're looking at wild type ATTR, uh, 200,000 to 500,000 people around the world. Uh, and meaning the carriers have a 50-50 chance of passing on the mutagen gene to an offspring, which is which is basically uh, the definition of a dominant inherited condition, right? And this is where NTLA comes in. So you have all this history. You have all this history that they've done a great job in this article diving deep into the history of this disease, how it passed from Canada to U.S. to, of course, in Ireland and you know Portugal and so on so what is the solution here and the solution is where we start talking about NTLA 2001 the drug called NTLA, NTLA 2000 works uh, works by in, inactivating the TTR gene and stopping the genetic expression of TTR in the liver cells and of course this is all about things that we've covered in this channel right so which I'm not going to go in depth in this video because that really wasn't the purpose to to specifically speak and dive into the NTLA 2001. I actually wanted to rather speak about this article as a history perspective. These diseases have a long history, right? These diseases, and you know, this is just one of the many diseases that we have a history type of lesson here in an article, really well written uh, by uh, Wired. Who's the author? Maybe I should probably shout out the author here. Uh, so it looks like it's, uh, do I have the author here? Uh, yeah, Grace Brownie. Great, great article, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Brownie. Great, great article. So, the, the the reason why I think this is really important to acknowledge as an article and has a, you know, as 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 a perspective that these things have been happening for centuries. These diseases have been in humans for centuries. It's not like they just some of them appear recent times, like decades ago, but some of them have been around for centuries. And the fact is, there have never there has never been a cure for any of these diseases, or at least most of them. And what happens is, for the first time in history, human coin, we actually have a potential cure. For diseases that was passed from Portugal to Ireland to U.S. to Canada, Japan, and this happened in centuries, right? With immigration, with travel, and so on, globalization, and so on. And now, for the first time in human history, we have a program such as NTLA 2001 that can tackle this this disease here, the ATTR, and and it's really amazing because it's it, it puts things in perspective, right? It puts us in a a, 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 a an angle that put the questions you know what is the purpose of technology technology should advance human forward and part of advancing human forward is to achieve things that were never able where we were never able to achieve in the 1800s in the 1900s in the 1700s 1600s and before that and what that is is basically part of part of those problems that we've had centuries ago is how do we get a cure for some of these diseases? Now, in medical field and uh, with our hospitals and with science, we've done an amazing job, right? Think about diabetes, think about, uh, think about uh, infusions, blood infusions, think about all these technology tools that we were able to, you know, to, 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 to do over time to potentially cure uh, or at least mitigate some of the negative results from some of these diseases, some of the problems with the human bodies that we never had a problem, uh, we never had a cure with. Uh, in the past, in a long time ago, we had shamans, we had few individuals that could do some voodoo stuff. I don't know what uh, what they were doing at that time, but they were doing some magical stuff, whatever. Uh, but today, it's no more magic, right? Today, it's actual science, uh, tackling atoms to atoms, right? And this is where we are today with CRISPR. 
CRISPR, like we see in this article, like you can see in many other diseases, it is doing something that we were never able to do in human history. And that is changing communities. That is changing the way we think. That is extending the life of humans. That is the purpose of technology. And that's why I believe 2023 will be a big year, a huge year, because CRISPR Therapeutics may be the first company to have a approval from CTX-01 from the FDA. We may have a continuous successful program from NTLA 2002 and 2001, uh, just like we covered here in this article. We may have data from Beam 101, from Beam Therapeutics. We may get additional data from Verve 101. We may get additional data from CAR T cells from CBO 10 and additional programs from Caribou. So lots of good things are happening in this space. And I think it's always important here as we end this year to look at how far we've come as human, as a society, and what is left for us to get over that hump, to really go to the next level, right? Uh, I mean, social media was great, you know, electrical vehicles were great, but changing the way our human bodies react, you know, changing and potentially curing diseases that we were never able to address, like we see here in Ireland, in Portugal, in US, in Canada, such as this specific disease, and that's just one of the many diseases. So lots of exciting things, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. I, I'll link this article here in the comments below. I highly recommend you guys to watch it uh, rather than read it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Next video will be tomorrow. Do subscribe if you found value. Like this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a beautiful, beautiful Friday, I guess. Uh, I don't know what day we are. Thank you.